Time for question and answer session. Um, as you guys might not know, I'm Dave Chesson, one of the co-founders of Atticus. I'd also like to point out uh, Jenna, who's also one of the co-founders. Go ahead and stand up and let everybody see you. She has been one of the stars of our team. Uh, she does an incredible job working with our support team as well as our programmers to make sure that anything you guys have to say gets translated over so that we can get some really cool stuff out to you. And so she's been a major, major part of that. Also too, uh, we have two of our all-star uh, support team members here in the crowd. Uh, Chelsea and Monique, please stand up and say hi. So. Any of you guys that have uh, used our support, you know that our support team is full of authors like yourself who truly understand what we're trying to do and will go the extra mile to make sure that it's communicated. I think it's, to me, support is one of the most important parts to a software company because you need to be able to be there when some people can understand things or not or when some people run into something. Having people that can answer in, you know, as a human, as a writer, I think is incredibly important. Now that being said, today we're going to be talking about Atticus. Now the fact of the matter is, is that present or creating this presentation is just a little bit hard to put together because I'm going to start by asking how many people in the crowd own Atticus? Okay, how many people in the crowd don't own it, but they're here to try to figure out? All right, so when you're creating a presentation like this, you have to create something that really serves both sides, okay? So to do this best, I figured, our best method is that in this presentation, we're going to give an overview of exactly what Atticus is and where it's going. I'm going to focus on a lot of the major developments that we've created uh, over the past six to eight months and also talk about some of the future things that are coming down the pipeline. But that being said, though, is that for those who are looking into it, uh, sitting and doing a demo might not help those that already own it, that have used it. So what we're going to do is that both Monique and Chelsea are going to be outside on the desks or one of the tables out there and they'll be prepared to give demos um, specifically for those who come over. They'll show you how it works. They'll be able to answer your questions. You'll see some things in real time. And I think that's a lot better of a kind of a personal approach than me just kind of demoing right here in the spot. So in this case, for the owners, you get to know what we've been doing. You might even find some features you didn't know are out there, as well as knowing what the future is. And then you can get some personal attention to be able to see the program, uh, how it would you know, work with your particular situation or your book groups, and just see it in action. Uh, we're also going to make sure that we have time for questions. Uh, I come from a military past, and um, you know, I, yep. Amen to that. Um, so I am all about the time. And by the way, if you see me do this, that, that's just a habit. They call it the knife hand. Um, I don't know how that created, but it all of a sudden, like, you know, when you're sitting there and you're talking, you just start knife handing people. And this is where we're going, and this is what we're going to do. So with that said, let me open the palm there. Uh, let's go ahead and jump in. So one of the big things I want to really talk about is exactly what is Atticus. Now, truth be told, I always look back at the, the phrase book writing software. And when people talk about book writing software, they think about just the writing component. But that's not what makes a book writing software. A book writing software is something that helps you to write a large form, but then you also have to edit and then you have to format. That's the difference maker. And truth be told is nobody's really tried to tackle something that allows an author to be able to do everything inside of it. So my original goal with Atticus was to create something that an author can plan, plot, write, collaborate, edit, and format, and control it all in one spot. And one of the greatest products to that is version control. How many of you have ever had maybe five files on your computer that say final copy, or all caps final, or final final, or this is the final? How many people have ever taken the wrong final and had that formatted? I once formatted and uh, published a book with the missing chapter. <laughs> Apparently that was not the final. That was the part final that, anyways. And so it's all about the fact that we authors have to go from one software to another to another just to create our books. So we wanted to create something where writing and creating professional books has never been easier. And, but the truth be told is we're not quite there yet. 
You see, in order to do this, I think there's three phases that we need to understand. The first is formatting, second is writing, and third is collaboration. Now, I know that's not the priority of them, but this is where we started as, as a software. You see, we looked at formatting as a whole, and we said, you know, there really aren't a lot of great options for authors um, for formatting itself. There is a particular one, but it's only on one particular computer. And there were so many authors out there that were having to literally buy a Mac computer in order to use this. Or there were authors that were fearful of even trying to format that they're paying hundreds, hundreds of dollars or so just for one book to be formatted by a professional. So we wanted to start by creating an effective and efficient way for authors of every tech level to be able to format their books the way they want it. Now this is one of those things where we have to balance the thing of making sure that that software is incredibly easy to use, but can offer extra juice for those that want to get really crazy with it and make something super unique. Now, as a software, it's a challenge because you want to make it where somebody can see it and just know what to do. But when you put too many things in it, you cover it with a whole bunch of buttons, a whole bunch of options, all of a sudden it changes. I feel as though we've done a really good job of balancing that. An author can use some of our special templates and dramatically create a professional looking book in a couple of minutes. Or they can go a bit deeper and they can make some really unique chapter themes, uh, they can create you know, incredible ornamental breaks and all these other things that make their book especially theirs and not something that looks like many other books out there. So we started with formatting and it has been one of the things we've been working around the clock to add even more features. We're going to talk about some of those. But our phase two, which is something we're really starting to move into, is also adding writing capability. So you can write inside of Atticus, and there are a lot of great things inside of there. Matter of fact, we just came out uh, recently with Find and Replace, um, and it's a really good look. And like, we didn't just make it like a little box. We went kind of uh, above and beyond to make it even better for writers by talking to you guys and seeing what else you wanted. Um, but we're adding more and more to the writing capability as we speak. And so we're trying to make it where the writing aspect of this is even better. And from there, authors can choose to either upload their Word document, because that's what they want to do and format it, or they can start creating their uh, writing project right inside of Atticus and then just choose to format when they're ready. So that gives the both of those. Now, and sorry, I should have been on this. Some of the things that we do have already in the writing capability is we also have habit tracking. You can all, so anybody do Fitbit? Fitbits? So we got a little, little device in there to kind of get you writing as well. You can track your goals. Um, we have all of the normal components that writing has, and we're going to be coming out with a lot more. Collaboration, though, this is the one that I'm most excited about. This is the thing that I really think will change the way we authors write. And I know that sounds like a platitude, and I really don't like saying that, but when you hear me out on what this is going to be, I think that this is going to... I think you'll, you might agree with that. Now, the way that it works is that when we come out with collaboration, and by the way, it's not out yet, but we built this with that in mind. It's kind of like when you're building a house, right? You start off with a foundation. The foundation has to be there to support, say, the three-story building you're making. So we built the foundation. Now we're stacking the floors as we go. So it's been designed and thought through with this in mind. Imagine that you are writing and then it comes time that you want to bring your editor in. You can click to collaborate with your editor, and the editor can do all the things. And by the way, we're going to design it so to the editor it feels like Word, because you know it's, that's key to most editors. We're going to be working with editors to take in their input as well, so as to make it even better for them. Um, there, I'm sure there are things they've all wanted. Now, as they edit, you'll be able to see that inside of your Atticus. What that means is there's no more emailing back and forth, back and forth with different copies and different file formats that say final, final copy. And what's even more incredible about this is that you can see exactly who has access to your book. So I want to look over at this right hand side here and there's four areas that we're going to be doing collaboration with. The first is the co-author, the second is the editors, third is formatters, and fourth is beta readers. Each one of those is going to have a separate capability. Uh, the only collaboration 
that needs both parties to own Atticus is co-writers and a formatter. So imagine this, you can now write together on the books and there's gonna be a lot of permissions that are out there that allow you to either lock chapters or control who can do what at what time. Uh, formatters, you know, if you just want to bring in some specialists just to format your book inside of Atticus and take care of everything for you, not a problem. Um, but those two need to also own Atticus as well. But with editors and with beta readers, what I love most about this is that they won't need to own it. They can open it up in a browser. They'll be able to work on it. Uh, they can store all the other books that they're working on as well. And they're going to have capabilities that you can give based off of filters and what you put in there. But the final thing to this, and this is one of the things that I've always personally wanted as an author, is that you can control who has access to this at all times. And what's even more so is that the editors, the beta readers, they can't download it. They can't take it off. They can't, so there's no copies of your book floating around out there. This will help with ebook piracy or just the chance of books getting out. And then what I love most is if you see on the right hand side, you'll see the name of everybody you've given permission to. And when they're done, you can click that little X button and they no longer have access to it. So imagine this, is that you're writing and then you start to bring in your team, your beta readers, your editors, your formatter. You bring them in and then you can control what they do and you can remove them from the project when they're done. And at the same time, keeps your book even more safe. So these three phases are the things that I wanna really make sure we all understand. We have hit phase one formatting, we're in the middle of writing, and we're really working hard on collaboration. My uh, head of product will not let me give a date, but I, I think it's safe to say that we will, in 2023, collaboration will be a thing, and it will be in line with exactly what we saw. And one last thing that I wanna say to everybody here too, is that as we come out with these new features, and as anybody who's ever worked with me on Publisher Rocket, or has been a part of Atticus from the beginning, they're free upgrades. Like, you get that. There's none of this whole, hey, we made the program better, so now you have to uh, pay us again to, to get this. So being a part of Atticus already, all those that raise your hand, you will see this in the future, and it will be our gift to you guys. So we appreciate all those who have been with us from the beginning. So let's talk about this. I mean, this is a crazy project. Um, you know. I mean, it seems like a great idea, right? Why hasn't somebody done it? It is a crazy project. Um, but it's been absolutely incredible. We have a phenomenal team that I'll kind of go over. Uh, we have seven full-time programmers that are working around the clock. And because of that, we've been able to add 51 new features and capabilities since November 2021. And we're not slowing down on that. This is what gives us that ability to continue to push to continue to add. And like I said with Rocket, uh, I've had that for seven years and every couple of months or so, I'm always trying to find a way to eat, make it better and better. The same thing goes with Atticus. And that starts with a dedicated team of specialists working on it. So our programming team uh, consists of, of Hank at TechQA and of course Chris as well, who helps us to make sure everything's good to go. We have our Full team uh, programmers, now I have eight up there, technically we're seven, but there's an eighth one that comes in to check code and just kind of, kind of play like they're, they're trying to wreck it and see what they can find and what bugs exist and then make it clean. And so these guys work fully on our project. There's no other project that they're working on, we're not sharing them and they can't just kind of disappear, which is, anybody who works with software engineers, you know what I mean about that. And then we have our support team as well. So, you know, myself and Jenna already uh, had Chelsea and Monique. We also have Haley and Felicia. And again, these are authors. We're all authors working on this. Um, I've always joked around and said, I love the fact that I get to be an author that has an, a programming team. Because then I'm like, man, wouldn't it be nice if? And so that's usually the basis of half the things I come up with, whether it's the free tools on Kindlepreneur or the new feature on Rocket or Atticus itself. Now, any software out there, uh, it's not exactly a tool until someone knows how to use it, right? And so we've dedicated a lot of resources in trying to give every form an opportunity for authors to learn how to use it. Now, we're actually, we just took some input, we're changing up our tutorial page, 
because we wanted to make sure there was one video that if you watch that one thing, you can be able to take, turn around, do, and see great results. But then we also have little specialized videos. There's questions people have, maybe something somebody wants to dig into. And so we've created these videos so that you can follow us step by step as we do them. And of course, Monique, anybody who, who watches our YouTube videos or been to our YouTube lives, Monique uh, constantly is making new videos showing it in action. And so we have people jump on there. You can see her past videos. You can watch her build things. You can watch her work on, on different things. So you can see it in action as well. And for any of, the, any of you guys interested in that, I've got a QR code up here that you can either kind of uh, jump on our YouTube so that you can subscribe and see when our latest video is out. Usually when we come out with a new feature, we'll also create a video there that can be a little update, if you will, letting you know that this new thing exists. I'll give a pause for effect. <laughs> By the way, while we're doing that, you know what? I, I'm, I'm sometimes a kid at heart, because every time I, I walk up and I see that sign on that mic, it says the mic is hot, I'm like, yeah, it is. <laughs> Anyways, so that's right. That mic, so hot right now. Zoolander fans, anybody? Oh. Yeah, there it is. All right. So. Let's talk about some of those latest features that we came out with. Now, I know that you know we're coming out, we're doing at least updates twice a week or so. It's probably a general way to put it, right? About two a week, um, and that's always finding new ways. The really cool part about how we design the software is we're able to make uh, adjustments and tweaks. They call it agile. Um, we get to do that like, spont like instantaneous. And what's really cool is it just it installs itself when you open it. So there's none of this having to delete the software and update and, oh, no, you have to sit and wait for a package to you know, download and then double click. It actually is just a really neat system where it's all up there and it's ready to come down the moment you open it up. So a lot of times when you open it up, you see maybe a little circle, circle that's quick. That's usually us just adding more. So, so one of the great things that, that we worked on, thanks to a lot of input, was making sure that we integrated with Grammarly and ProWritingAid. Um, and so you can use both these programs. Uh, you can use the free version uh, as well, but if you have the paid version, you can benefit from that too. We have a tutorial showing you exactly how to do that, so if you go to our tutorial page, you can find videos that show you how to access that. Um, we also partnered with BookBrush, and with our uh, full page bleed capability as well as creating special chapter themes, uh, you can even make it that each chapter is different. I've seen some really cool designs, and this is something I want to show is like create a gallery in the future where people can get ideas. But I've seen one where a plant started from a seed and each chapter grew, and by the end of it, it was a full bloom rose. Um, you know, I've seen ones where an airplane was flying across the page with each chapter, and you know, kind of like an animation to that effect. Um, but here's the thing, though. Coming up with those pictures, that's kind of hard, right? I mean, it's neat. It's really cool to see that, right? And there's a lot of things that we're working on in the future um, to really address this. Um, I won't say it here yet, but I can't wait until I can tell you guys. Um, but that being said, though, BookBrush is an incredible kind of like Canva for authors. And what you can do is you can use it to create the images that you want. But you know what really stinks about this, though? I call it the problem. Getting your images to work can be difficult. Because what happens is, is that inside of Atticus, you'll select your trim size for your book, right? So you'll go through this list. By the way, the little color coordination lets you know if that trim size works in either Ingram or in Amazon. So you can select one that you know works for the market that you're going to be printing the book on. But then to get that image on there, you have to calculate. You have to say, OK, well, if my trim size is this, then I need the image to be exactly this size. So once you get that, the other thing is to do that two-side image, you have to split it down the middle, OK, which is not fun. <laughs> and then hopefully you did all your calculations right. You split it exactly down the middle, and you can put those two pictures, and you don't see some weird wonky bleed issue or you know double pixelation or anything like that. So this is why we approached book, uh, book Brush. Instead, we added a button right there in Atticus, okay, where when you select that, you can then we basically put all of our information inside a Book Brush. 
So you can go there and you can choose if you want to do a double side, you know, a two sided picture, two page picture, or if you want to make a special custom ornamental break. And once you've selected that, you then choose the trim size and they have all the calculations in there, no problem. And once you do that, the canvas you see is the exact perfect look. It's gonna work great with us. And now you can drag and drop the image right in there, make it look exactly how you want. And you see that little green dash? They're ready to cut it into two parts for you. And so, once that's done, and you selected, you can download the picture and drag and drop it right into Atticus and you don't have to fits with all of that. And again, that was one of those things where we had a lot of people that was like, this is really cool, but I'm not a Photoshop person and I'm not, I can't figure out the thing with Canva and how do you split it in half? So we found an easier solution, working with a great company. And then you have a really cool two page full bleed image. The next was called the open on page. Uh, this is something that really was important to me. Um, and truth be told, I learned a long time ago about a special programming hack where you can make your ebook open on whichever page you choose. The problem is, not many people knew about it or were using it. So I'd have to go in there and code specifically. I think Judo did it a long time ago. That, that's, where, that's where I found out. Mad props to them on that. But here's the thing though. When you write your book, generally the Kindle is supposed to open up on the first chapter, okay? Sometimes though, if you have a prelude or you have a forward, it might not, it might not hit that. Or even more so, perhaps you've created a landing page on your, on your front matter. Let's say it's um, you're offering a nonfiction book and you have a companion course, right, that goes with the book. You would want your ebook to open up on the page that discusses the companion book or the companion course so that people can download it. However, though, without this capability, people are going to miss it and they won't know. So now you've got to weave it in the book. So instead, so again, I jumped ahead, but the problem is, is that the book can open up anywhere, right? You don't have control. So if you have a prologue or a preface or forward or content upgrade page, that's that word for it, it won't happen. So the solution was we created this capability that you can now tell a Kindle to open on whichever page you want. And so all you have to do is go to formatting, choose what section you want opened, and there's that start page as you can see. And then from that point on, when you send your book to a Kindle and that person opens it up, it will start on that exact page. Custom pages. So this is another one as an author I've had a major pain point on, okay? The problem, there's two parts here, okay? Authors don't want to waste time copying and pasting parts of previous books into new books. The other problem is some parts are used over and over in different books and need updating over time, like your also buy. So for example, in the also buy page, you list your latest books. Well, every time your latest book comes out, right, you have to go back through every book and you have to copy and paste, copy and paste, copy and paste, right? So jumping ahead on that. So the solution, allow for special custom pages that if updated will allow users to automatically update all books that use that page. So let's say you have a special also buy page that you've used in seven other books and you've used it through our custom page, right? And you go to the eighth one, and you use that custom page, and then you add the latest book in there. All of a sudden, Atticus will pop up, okay? So you create the custom page, you add it, you make your change. Sorry, I keep forgetting I made slides with pretty pictures on it. Um, and then when the time comes, it says, hey, whoa, did you know that you have this on other books? Would you like us to automatically update all those books? And it will tell you what those books are. And then you can click yes. And now all your books are updated. You can do this on your copyright page. You can do this on your about the author page. You can do this on your also buy. Any page that you constantly use. And so for some of those publishing, publishers out there that have lots of different uh, books that they have to maintain, or for you know, the mass writers that have oodles amounts of books or so, this can be a real time saver. One of the latest features that we came out to is we now have footnotes and endnotes. Uh, this is something that most in the industry do not have. Um, and I believe me, after tackling that programming feat, like, I, I understand why. Uh, footnotes are not the easiest thing. And getting it so that um, all the printing presses will accept it, 
uh, is important. Now that being said though, that there are no footnotes for most of the ebook readers. Ebook readers can't take it. So you, when you are looking at your Kindle or an ebook, it will offer the end notes, which is putting your notes at the end of a chapter or end of the book, your choice. But on print book, you can choose footnotes or end notes, whichever you prefer. And so creating these have been, I think the only other option at this point is InDesign for footnotes for printing. Yeah, yeah manual, yeah, exactly. So for all the nonfiction writers or any fiction writers that like to put a little footnote in here, this is, this is a, that was a fun project. Um, compression of files. This is incredibly important because for every one megabyte your EPUB file is, Amazon will take 15 cents in download fees. So the heavier file, the more it's gonna cost you. Now, I wanna put a special note in there, is that when you export a file from, say, any formatting, that file size is not the file size that Amazon recognizes. You won't know until you upload it to them, okay? Um, and so, because there's certain things they cut out uh, that they don't accept, you know, or it's like, no, nope, that's fine. You, you, that might, ha might be in your file, but we don't acknowledge that when looking at the download cost. So, if your EPUB is two megabytes large, you will lose 30 cents for every ebook sold. If you sell 2,000 ebooks, that means you lost $600. So the solution, using special coding from Amazon to create the lowest download cost possible. So Atticus, and this is something I'm gonna tell you in a little bit later in here, is working a system that's able to work through Amazon, figure out exactly what kind of download cost this is gonna be, and constantly working to tweak the coding so as to make sure that we lower that cost. Because the fact of the matter is, is that if we lower that cost, say, just two cents, for every book. And you sell a thousand books, that's a lot of money that you're selling, that you're saving, just because of two cents. So we have been, and we have a little something special uh, that I'll tell you at the end, that's gonna allow us to do this really well. Finally, copyright uh, templates has been another thing that just came out. Um, many people have their own template, they have their own copyright, and that is totally cool. Put it in, make it your own custom page, apply it to any book you want. But then again, maybe you're working in public domains, maybe you've got a different, you know, different thing that you're creating. And by the way, we're coming out with new templates all the time, working with our lawyers to create something really cool and ironclad. You can use it for inspiration, uh, add stuff, take stuff out. Um, but this is gonna be one of those ways that we were just able to help you in creating those copyright pages and make sure they're as, as stellar as they can be, or as ironclad as they can be, it's probably a better phrase. Next one, and this is one that's been in the works for a long time and I'm very excited about, is universal links. Uh, how many people were in our universal links, uh, universal book links discussion? Okay, so you know, that this, you know what this means. So the problem is, markets like Amazon do not allow links to other stores in their books, but sometimes readers want books from their preferred store. And that also goes with the other stores. iTunes doesn't like Amazon links, Barnes & Noble doesn't like iTunes links. They just don't like it. Um, go figure. The other issue too is that most formatting software makes you create one file for each book market. So you export your book for Amazon because you have your Amazon links in there to your other books. Then you go change all your links again and for your Barnes and Noble links and then you export that one and then you, and notice that that's, you've got all these different files that you now have to control and get onto the right market. And if you make the mistake and you put the wrong one on the wrong market, you're gonna get flagged and that's gonna really hurt your launch. So that stinks, right? So instead, we created a solution. Uh, easily, easily create one link that will allow readers to buy your book from whichever store or location they want instantly. Now, to create that, that would have been a huge lift, and that would have stopped us from being able to add like the you know, footnotes and the endnotes. So instead, we partnered with, um, with Genius Links, right here, Jesse. And Jesse's all like, I'm, I'm gonna get a video of this. Excited about this. <laughs> that's, that's right. And in this case, right inside of Atticus, you can highlight whatever it is you want, and you have three choices, okay? You have the, you, you can choose a uh, internal link, so you want to link to a different page, have somebody jump. You can put an external link, something that jumps out to another website, or you can choose a book linker, okay? We actually have a different term on this one, but it just came out yesterday. And all you have to do is put in 
one link to your book on any on those markets, okay? And then the markets so far include Amazon, Barnes and Noble, and iTunes, and pretty soon we'll have Kobo and Google as well. So just find your book on just one, doesn't need to be all, put that link in there, and it will automatically generate, okay? It will automatically generate a special page for you that shows your cover, and it will find everywhere your book is sold on those markets. And now, when your customer clicks on that link in your book, it will open up this page and they can choose whichever market they want to buy from. Also, it will make sure that it is in the right location. So if the person's in Germany and they click on your Amazon book, that will make sure that you end up in the German market of Amazon and seeing the book exactly there. This is really important because of a couple things. One, you do not need to now publish all these different versions using all the different links. On top of that too, is that they have some incredible analytics. So you can go in, if you've set up a free account, you can go look and see what the click rate is. And you could also look at who is uh, looking at this and kind of detail and understand your readers and what it is they want better. And this is all just done for you. And finally, this also gives you one spot shot. So you do not have to build this site. You do not have to create these images. All right, so those are some of the things that we've come out with. Here's the coming soon. Page balancing versus widows and orphans. So an interesting thing about formatting is, is that you have two different types of people. There's the people who truly believe in widows and orphans and those who believe in page balancing. I mean, it's like west side, east side here, you know? Um, and, and quite frankly, from programs in the past, all formatting has just been like, we do the one thing, that's it, right? Well, so we started with widows and orphans. That being said though, is our team has been working crazy amount of hours trying to, f trying to build this capability where you can say, you know what? I want it to focus on page balancing, not widows and orphans. Or I want it to focus on widows and orphans and not page balancing. But then we thought, why not make both? Why not make one that actually does both? And so this is something we haven't, we gotta come out with some like fun name. Matter of fact, anybody who comes up with a cool name for this, I'm gonna give you like the, the uh, digital cookie and t-shirt as well. But we wanna call it like the, I don't know, the Atticus balancing or something like that. And what it does is it works to make sure that widows and orphans are addressed and page balancing is always taken in consideration. And so you as the author can truly control what it is. If you have one preference, it's yours. Or if you want to kind of have the best of both worlds, click, voila. And of course, I forgot my problems. <laughs> okay, and big news, Amazon partnership. So we had Amazon contact us uh, and basically say, oh, we love your program. And at first I thought, uh-oh. <laughs> 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 okay, uh, what does that mean? Um, here's the thing, Amazon's getting to a point where they don't want to touch Kindle Create. Uh, it was something that they created years ago and it was their way of just trying to bring in new books. The problem is, is that they don't want to put the resources into it. Anybody who's used Cre Kindle Create understand it's incredibly limited and it needed to be fixed like five years ago. Um, so instead, Amazon's number one focus is to make it that books that are published are, published are phenomenal before they get into the market, not after the market. Because let's face it, when we publish a book, on Amazon, Amazon sends us those annoying emails that says, oh, you have a spelling mistake, or you have this thing, or critical error, you need to look at it, right? Well, they don't want it on the market, and they know that we don't listen to those emails. So what they want to do is, we're working right now to potentially get an API inside of Atticus, and it will only be on Atticus, that will allow you to do a check on Amazon and verify what are they gonna flag. And then you can fix it right there in Atticus, and you won't have that problem anymore. On top of that too, uh, you can tell Amazon to go take a hike because no, I intentionally misspelled that, so stop, don't send me the emails. <laughs> right? Exactly. I'm sorry, my, my, somebody said this earlier and I loved it. My character was eating peanut butter when he said that. I don't want seven you know, spelling errors, right? So you can tell Amazon to take a hike on that and they won't send you the email. But here's what's even better. We're working with them and this is not confirmed yet, but um, being able to know exactly what your KU pages will be Oh, but here's the fun one. Knowing exactly what the download cost will be before you hit export. 
and that's the one that has me absolutely excited because can you imagine my programmers with that API figuring out exactly how to make sure the code is as streamlined and as low as possible? We'll be able to say without a doubt that metadata inside doesn't help or does help, or it adds to your kilobyte count, or hey, you know what? We found that if we switch to this coloration on the images, it actually shaves off and they, ex they accept that. We'll be able to know for sure and we'll be the only ones. So my team will work around the clock to make sure that that file size is as small as it possibly can be. And again, I forgot the thing. I got excited about it. <laughs> All right. Now with that, that leads us to our questions. And like I said, we're going to have our team, uh, they're going to be right outside on those little desks that will have their computer out, being able to show you or answer any particular questions. If you want to see something in action, they can take care of that, or they can just give you a full demo so you can see it and see for yourself. Otherwise, if that's not the case and you need to run to something, you can always go to atticus.io forward slash tutorials and see our tutorials in action, or just watch one of our YouTube lives like we discussed. And with that, if anybody has any questions, please come up to the hot mic. And uh, we'll go from there. By the way, I love the ears. Thank you. Thank you very much. And again, wonderful, wonderful presentation. Thank you. I just had a quick question about the universal links. I'm at, Can you guys oh. hear me? Um, I have a quick question about the universal links. Thank you again yes. for the presentation. Um, I'm not clear as to how, uh, as far as our ISBNs, you said that we can create one link that allows all the, our readers to buy books from wherever they want. Do we still need to make sure that we have our own ISBNs or that we have one with those distributors? Oh, so the way that it will work is that you just find a link to your book on one of those markets. You put it in and then it will go out and it will find where your book is on those markets and just collects it for you and puts it in one spot. Like, so major time saver. Thank you so much. I thank that guy right there. I mean, I'm jazzed about it. I was like, yeah. When I saw him send that email, I was like, done. We're working with you. So will BookLinker, as the universal uh, linker, also handle affiliate codes? Yes, it will. Okay. Yeah, absolutely. And a whole bunch more. Also working with Genius Link, which is uh, Genius Link created Book Linker. You can go even further. So any of those data nerds that like want to like go hardcore in understanding their market, that one-two punch right there is like stellar. Yes, ma'am. I actually have three questions because I'm greedy. Um, one, uh, I like to make edits in Atticus, and then I really want to download a Word file. But then the Word file comes down, and it is like a hot mess. Uh, is that something you guys are planning on working on at any point? Yes. So with Word, generally speaking, on the, um, when we export, so if you've been working on, on it with Atticus, right? Uh, so you've been writing your book, and then you want to export with Word. Generally speaking, the normal, like if there's certain special formatting that's been added, that will probably look a little weird coming out of formatting. But that being said, there's a lot of stuff that we want to clean up. The other thing that we want to also add uh, that we're working on as well is uploading Mobi and EPUB files so that you can throw it up into us. That's another thing that's in the pipeline. We technically can do it, but it's not clean enough that we want to. I see Jenna's. See, I have to look over here because like, she's like. Okay, you can say that. <laughs> yeah, as a last resort. But there's a lot of cleanup that we can do to make that even better. Okay. Thank you. And then um, when you say find and replace, is there a way to do that in the whole document or is it still only chapter by chapter? It's whole document now. Yeah. Whole document, chapter by chapter, whichever one you choose. All right. And last question. Uh, I cannot possibly be the only person who noticed that if you try to render a PDF in the morning, it goes faster than if you do it at 6 p.m. Is there a reason for that? The rendering? No. Oh. Okay then it's my children's fault and I will talk to them about it. <laughs> <laughs> yes, ma'am. Uh, so I'm Troy, the plotter guy. Hey, how's I it going? I gotta ask, when's the integration with plotter gonna, is there gonna integrate yes. with plotter gonna happen? When's it happening? So we actually just uploaded a video um, last week or so showing how to use plotter already. You can actually upload the JSON file that they, ex oop, that they export um, and then parcel it out. But there's a lot more that we can do. Um, to make it even more, shall we say, congruent with the writing. Uh, this is one of those areas that I personally like, 
I can't wait to crack my knuckles and like really dig in. Um, but I always find that with plotting, right, we, we plot, we use, and there's all these different ways that people choose to plot. But then when it comes time, we have to have like two different windows up. We have the plotting window and then we have the writing window. But there's things that we can do as a writing software to be able to take the information and put it where authors need to see it while they write. Um, and so we have a lot of really awesome ideas on how we use plotters information and put it where you need it, on the chapters you need it, when you need it, and how you need it. And so this is one of those things, I love the plotter guys, I've been working with them as well. By the way, I don't know if you guys noticed a common theme. Uh, the fact of the matter is, is that writing soft, we writers have so many different tastes and ways on how we want to approach things. It's important that we work to have those options so that you can integrate the things you want, whether it's the grammar checkers, whether it's a speech to text, whether it is you know, book linker, whether it is a uh, book, Brett, like all of those. So we're always making our code open to be able to work with programs. Um, but plotter's got a little special place in my heart. So we're really trying to make sure that that data gets to the right spot. We should talk about that. I know where I want the stuff. <laughs> hey, so first off, support is awesome. And I'm sorry that I blew them up last year. I didn't scroll far enough down the page. So <laughs> my bad. Um, Google Docs. So uh, right now, starting new projects by importing from Word, uh, do you anticipate being able to support importing Google Docs? So right now, the best way would be to just export the Google Doc as, as a Word and then upload. Um, in truth, though, uh, I know there's some things that we can work on in the future to kind of make that an even better process. Uh, but for right now, since it doesn't stop the Google Doc writer from getting it there, it's low on the priority, but it's definitely a place that we can add. Okay, cool. Thank you. Yes, sir. Hi. When you... Uh roll out the collaboration element, is that going to like boom, hit the ground running or is it going to be pieces, parts along the way or? Well, I mean, to tell you the truth, um, it's one of those where, it's one of those where I think we'll probably do the editor first, if, if anything, because I think that if we were to ask the users, hey, would you just like the editor part and then later we'll come out with the, with the rest, that allows us to play a lot longer with um, the writer to writer collab because if you guys have watched any of the presentation, or I think last year there was a presentation on this, but um, I don't know if there's this year where it talks about like how to do a writing collab. There's a lot of like do's and don'ts, and somebody That's has. The part to I want. <laughs> oh well, like we can we can look into it. I think as we get real close to it, we'll know. What, like sometimes with programming, this is kind of the funny thing. So like for example, that page balancing versus um, uh, widows and orphans. Man, we really thought we were going to have that like ready a couple weeks ago. And then we found one little nagging issue, and it's like, okay, yeah, that, no, we can't, we can't put part of it out. That's not cool. We're going to hold off until we get it. But sometimes we can have something where it's like, uh, in case of the collaboration, we may find that our editor version is phenomenal, but the writer version isn't. So let's get the editor out since it's good to go so we don't hold back the editors. Or it may be the writing is actually phenomenal, and the editor one has given us a pain. Um, so we may, I feel like that's going to end up being rolled out part by part. Um, but I can't say until we get real close to that. Yes, ma'am. Uh, so when you guys start your collaboration with Amazon, is there a way that you might be able to sweet talk them into if the people use the bad button of doom for edits, that we can incorporate that the same way as theirs? Hmm. Because it's like we get blindsided sometimes with somebody who thinks they're an editor and is all of a sudden in our documents blowing it up and then we have to go in and find it piece by piece by piece by piece and then go into our formatting and then change it. But if you guys already have the system set up. Yeah, and so long as it's automated, um, as long as there's not a person but automated, that's exactly what the system will do. Okay. So it will, it literally puts your book through their little checking system immediately, not days later or anything like that. And then it comes back and says, all right, this is what we would have flagged you with. And then at that point, you can just either tell it, be gone with you, we're going with so you. This or... is the one that readers can go in. It's the quality. Oh, the report issue. button. Got yeah. it. So hmm. when they report it, when right. you have the reader that's going through, and there's a button in your Kindle that you can hit Got and it. say this is an error, and then they then have a whole entire category that's set up hmm. in the exact same place that they give those notifications. Yeah, we'll we'll write that down. We'll have next time we have that conversation with them, we'll make sure that that can be added because then you can. Because that would make it so much more easier. Yeah, exactly. Say. Yeah. And that, you know, that's the thing that Amazon wants most is that the book is ready before it enters the market and then we have better control because right now it sucks for an author to have to do those updates. Um, you know, the best part about Atticus is that you can, lit if say for example, somehow without the, let's say there's no Amazon API. 
and you get one of those emails, you just change the one thing and hit export, it's good to go. Your, your file is right there. There's no picking up the file, contacting your formatter anymore, or uploading everything and reformatting. You just click, add the, you know, make the spelling correction, it's done. Um, that being said though, is that uh, with the API, we'll definitely have that talk about how to best control that, because you're right, uh, that does suck. So, yeah. Thank you. Absolutely. And I've got two more minutes uh, before we hit our mark. Um, I'll try to go fast. Yeah. Um, so I just started trying to format my first box set yeah. in Atticus. I've been using Atticus for quite a while now um, and really love it. But my box set is so unwieldy and horrible, mm. and it's given me a lot of pain. So I'm wondering if a merge feature could be accomplished through Atticus, where when you already have all your books formatted through Atticus, you could just merge them. Can I say the month? We expect that there's going to be a phenomenal way of handling that in January. Yes. Yep. <laughs> See, this is, this is like, I get to be the guy who's up here and I was like, yeah, this is it. I have to keep looking back over at my co-creator here and I'm like, uh, yeah, can I, can I say it? Can I say it? Pressure's on. They're all looking at you. Yeah. So you may have answered both of these questions, but let's say I have 75,000 words in Word. Mm -hmm. And now I want to start using Atticus as my formatter. How seamlessly will those 75,000 words come out of Word and go into Atticus? Yeah, uh, very easily. Very easily? Yes. And matter of fact, it's also been, so it's uh, anybody who's written a large document on Google Docs knows that when you have a, like over 100,000 words that Google Docs starts to get real slow and laggy. Hmm. Nope. We got okay. that figured out. And the second so. question, I get this whole project finished. I'm ready to hit publish through Amazon, how seamlessly will it go from Atticus through the Amazon process? So even before this API comes out, uh, you just hit export to EPUB, and you take that file and you drop it in on your KDP just like that. Good to go. Um, and then when we have the API, then you're going to be able to communicate with Amazon even before you hit export and verify that there's not even a chance of any problems. And that's like the cool part. That's what I'm most jazzed about. So even better. I'm in love. <laughs> Me too. <laughs> Well, that's what happens when you step up to the hot mic. <laughs> All right, with that, thank you guys so much.